As you guys can kind of tell, I'm really not the most athletic person. I'm just kind of slow and sluggish. Um, I'm really, and I'm not really into sports. Um, like I don't follow them. If there's a Seahawks game on or a hockey game, I'll chill, watch one. You know, it's kind of fun. Well, that was until this summer when I discovered, when I discovered God's gift to humanity. That would be rugby. <laughs> Easily one of the best sports in the entire world. Um, completely, 100% sold out to it. Um, my favorite player plays for the French national team. His name is Sebastian Chabal. The guy's a tank. Six foot two, arms as big as my, I don't know, me. <laughs> He's big, I'll put it that way. Um, so I'm going to show you a little, uh, little clip of what this guy can do on the field, and it's simply terrifying. Anyway, you get the guy. You get the point that the guy's insane. Um, the rugby coaches have a huge responsibility of training their team, um, and not only how to understand the game because it doesn't make any sense. The rules are completely ridiculous. Um, but they also the rugby coaches also need to um, equip their team members um, with the skills they need to survive and to thrive in the game. Um, as much as I want to play rugby, I know I'm not equipped with the skills to play. Um, and, you know, most of us are all ministry <coughs> majors of some form, I'm going to do ministry of some sort. Um, in the same way, we're like the rugby coaches. Um, I mean, in, know in knowing this, um, this is going to be kind of like a little three-part discussion. I didn't mean this to be a three-point sermon, but, you know, it happens. So, like, the first point that um, we come across in equipping is God equips us. Isaiah 45, 5 says, I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no <coughs> other. So, last time I shared with you guys, uh, my life was kind of screwed up. Like, if you were to kind of get a visual of what it was like, picture in your mind a train. And, and like focus right on the tracks right before it starts to derail. That's what it kind of looked like. Uh, <laughs> even in those moments where I didn't know what was going on, God was still equipping me for what he wanted me to do, to do in my life. <clears throat> the first thing he did was he started to equip my heart to yearn for something bigger than what I knew I could deal with at that moment something greater than what I thought I could do. 
What God did is he pulled me out of a situation where I was trying to you know, kill myself. And um, what he wanted me to do is he wanted me, he um, expected me, and um, he equipped me to love him and to love teenagers. I'm a youth ministry major, so I'm, I'm pretty sold out for a bunch of dorky high school kids who kind of don't know what's going on in their lives yet. <laughs> Junior, junior hires are even more fun because they have really no idea what's going on. <laughs> um, so he, he's equipping me to um, love on these people and to love him more at the same time of me of helping me deal with my own garbage that's in my life. It wasn't easy, but as to all things that we do with, all things that God does with us, there's, there's always a purpose. <clears throat> the second point is that um, we are equipped to do the will of the Lord. Hebrews 13, 19, 19 through 21, if I can talk, says, um, Now may the God of peace, who brought, um, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything that you may do um, his will, working in us um, that which is pleasing in his sight, through, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So in, in the Greek, this word comes up a couple other times in the New Testament, um, the word for equip is um, katartizo. And um, some of the other ways that this word is used um, or defined is to render, um, to fit, make it, sa make it um, complete, to mend, um, to put in order or arrange or adjust um, to prepare, um, and sometimes it can be even um, translated as to be made perfect. Um, ministry is one of those things that God has placed upon my life that I love and hate at the same time. Um, it's really fun. I love it, and like getting a chance to speak into kids' lives, but it's so difficult. If it's um, <coughs> The Lord called me to ministry two or three months after I uh, became a Christian, which was kind of scary to me because I was still trying to figure out what this whole thing was all about. Uh, and it's been an uphill struggle ever since. Um, if it wasn't something that I was doing wrong, it was something that somebody else in the church was doing wrong, it's a problem I was having with the leader, and it just kept going back and forth. And I got fed up pretty quick. <clears throat> We all tend to get really bent out of shape um, about ministry when, when things aren't going our way, if we're not, if our sermon didn't go the right way, first one in here, yeah, that was, that was a train wreck, um, or if we didn't reach enough people, or if something just in the structure of it all fell apart, um, or we don't get the numbers that we want, well, numbers is a whole different situation that I'm not really going to get into right now because it's kind of sketchy. Uh, I've been helping out this new um, <coughs> new ministry at my home church, and it's been pretty sweet. If it's that little little post right there, element, it's awesome. You guys should sh show up. It's different. Uh, it's it was we kind of designed it to where it was built for people who were kind of tired of seeing church the same way, where you show up, you stand up, you sit down, you sing a couple contemporary songs that have been played since 1992 and never stopped. Um, and we were kind of just getting tired of the predict predictableness of that. And the entire time in the planning process, which is about a year or so, it was definitely an uphill struggle just trying to deal with, well, we're going to have access to the church tonight. Are we going to be able to get a key if we have to leave late? <coughs> and it just kept getting more and more difficult. Um, and so I walk into a, a Christian bookstore and as, as fun and as irritating as those are sometimes, playing Michael W. Smith. No offense to if you guys like Michael W. Smith. <laughs> I don't. Um, I found this book by Andy Stanley called Visioneering. It's amazing. Um, if you guys don't have it, 